Evander Holyfield defeats Dwight Muhammad Kwawi. This day in boxing history, July the 12th, 1986. Hello, fight fans. Coach Nathan back at you again from Ennis Champs 7 Park Boxing Series at EnnisChamp7.com. And first off, if you enjoy this video, please click that like and notification button and share and subscribe to EnnisChamp7.com. Okay, folks, this day in fight history was when Evander, the real deal Holyfield, became the first of that highly successful 1984 Olympic boxing team to win a professional world title, which was the WBA Cruiserweight Championship from the man known as the Camden Bussaw, Dwight Muhammad Kwawi. Now at that time, he was 26 wins, two defeats, one draw, with 15 by way of knockout. Kwawi, formerly known as Dwight Braxton, his life is an interesting study of hard knocks, dedication, and overcoming obstacles. He got into a life of crime as a youth and ended up spending five years in prison at the Rockway State Penitentiary in New Jersey. And that's where he learned how to box. He had no amateur fights and turned pro at the age of 25 as a five foot six inch light heavyweight. It was after his third fight, which was a loss to then top 10 contender Johnny Davis, that the veteran trainer Wesley Muzon noticed his need for defense. And he went to work on making Dwight a more slicker and harder to hit fighter by teaching him how to bob and weave, slip punches, and shoulder rolls, which is commonly known today as the Philly Shell. In fact, they train out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at Smoking Joe Frazier's gym. Another interesting note on the trainer, Wesley Muzon was a slick, fast-fisted lightweight who fought two world champions in the 1940s, Ike Williams, which resulted in a draw, and Bob Montgomery twice. The first was a KO win, and the second match a KO loss. He also went on to train former pound-for-pound -pound great Roy Jones Jr., and top 10 middleweight and super middleweight contender at the time, Tony Thornton. Now coming into the Hollyfield match, Kwawi was a former World Light Heavyweight Champion who had recently lost a unification match to Michael Spinks. He had one defense of the newly won Cruiserweight title and that was a victory over the former World Heavyweight Champion, Leon Spinks, Michael's brother. Evander came into the fight as a highly decorated amateur, having won the 1983 Pan American Games, the 1984 National Golden Gloves, and he was an Olympic bronze medalist. He was ranked number one by the WBA despite having only 11 pro fights. And I'm sure a lot of that had to do with his manager and promoter Lou Duva and his trainer Georgie Benton. He did have a seven inch height and reach advantage and he was 10 years younger at 23 years old compared to Kwawi, who was 33 years old. The match was billed as the Pandemonium, and it was on Hollyfield's home turf at the Omni Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. And as it turned out, it was an exciting, grueling, hard-fought back-and-forth match that went the full 15 rounds. And to this day, Hollyfield states that that was the toughest test he ever had as a professional fighter and it was one of the last title fights to go 15 rounds. After winning a split decision in the title, Hollyfield went to the hospital because of dehydration from losing 15 pounds during the match. Dwight, as reported from Sports Illustrated at the time, didn't train seriously until five weeks before the match and lost over 30 pounds during training camp to make the weight. The rematch was a year and a half later, and by that time, it was not only two different fighters, but they were going in two different directions. With Evander scoring a clean knockout with an uppercut in round four, then going on to become the unified undisputed cruiserweight champ, then moving up to the heavyweight ranks and winning the world heavyweight championship four times. As for Dwight, he went on to have six more losses including a fight he took on two week notice against one of the hardest punchers in heavyweight boxing history, Big George Foreman, and that resulted in a seventh round knockout loss. 
Dwight revealed later that he had started drinking alcohol heavily and lost his desire to train. But as of today, Kwawi, who was 71 years old, is clean and sober, and he helps others who had the same struggles that he had at the Lighthouse Drug and Rehab Center in Mays Landing, New Jersey. And he was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2004. Evander was inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame in 2015. Now, it has been widely reported of Hollyfield's financial and bankruptcy problems of how he lost just about all of his estimated $230 million in ring earnings. But as of now, he appears somewhat back on track financially as he has reported net worth of $1.2 million. Now, that's through personal appearances, ad revenue, and he's a paid advisor to heavyweight prospect China's own Jalei Big Bang Zhang, which shows he's not completely broke. Now, on a personal note, it's good to see these ex-pro boxing champs have at least a decent sustaining lifestyle outside the ring after watching them giving so much of their life, their blood, sweat, and tears inside the ring. So, that's my take on this one, folks, as we look back on another exciting World title fight, this day in boxing history, July the 12th, 1986. But don't forget, for elite boxing instruction, elite boxing analysis, and elite boxing philosophy, click that like and notification button and subscribe to NS Champ 7 Bar Boxing Series at NSChamp7.com. And as always, I'll be seeing you the next main event.